thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. What we're going to be covering is an introduction to Aptivo as a platform, and then specifically we're going to be taking a dive in to be talking about our CRM system and the different capabilities that are available to you. And at the end of this, you should have all the information. We'll teach you about all the features and kind of how to do some basic setup of the application. And you should have all the things that you need in order to go ahead and get started with the configuration for your business. So real fast, let's talk about what is Aptivo as a whole. So it's an integrated suite of cloud business applications. And there's a ton of different apps from various different functional areas. The CRM kind of acts as the core of the system where having that central contact database it serves as the foundation for all of your other business operations. So if you launch a project, you're going to be able to invite contacts and add them to the project. Or when you send an invoice, you're going to select a customer and a contact from the database. Same thing with the help desk component is it'll reference the contact stored in that CRM system. So everything in Aptivo is designed to kind of integrate together, share information across the various applications and be able to forge these integrated business flows. A little bit about the software itself is it's completely cloud-based, so all you need is an internet connection to get to the system. Lots of different security measures taken to ensure that all of your data is properly backed up, encrypted, and available in case of some sort of disaster. Then we are fully cross-device compatible as far as our new technology is concerned. So we're going to talk a little bit about V6, which was just introduced to the CRM recently. And you'll be able to use any modern web browser. And we also have a fully responsive design in the CRM. So it can just be brought up through any web browser on even a mobile or a tablet device. And we also do have native mobile applications that'll cover the full CRM area that we're going to be talking about today. These are available for both Android and iOS. Otherwise, inside of your CRM, as far as controlling records, you're going to have lots of different security features available for restricting access to an entire record, a specific feature, or a certain set of data like email within one record. So you can get very granular there. And then when we're talking about CRM in Aptivo, uh, there's a lot of different definitions for CRM out there. We look at it as kind of a breakdown of three different just general areas of functionality. Yeah, there's kind of different kind of breakdowns of each one of these, but at a very high level, we look at the core of contact management. So like we said, you have one profile for each person and organization that you work with, and then all the other business transactions you do, they are related to that one contact. One of those business transactions would be a sale to them. So we have our standard Salesforce automation for your pipeline management, where you can actually track these potential deals through their, their progress. And then we have another angle, which is customer support. So having a help desk system where you can log inquiries or problems from customers and then go through the resolution steps, communicate with them, and track all of that and report on it inside of those, those areas. Now, primarily today, we're going to be focusing in on contact management because that's the foundation for everything. And we're going to be taking a little bit of a deeper look at Salesforce automation, but we will spend a little bit of time on the help desk, which is our cases app. But one thing we want to just quickly talk about so in Aptivo, one of the special things about the CRM is the integration of applications that are not typically available in your CRM. So let's say if you're tracking a deal, okay, you need to do a quote from it. So being able to send out a formal uh, PDF file with your logo on it, having an online page where they can go to approve it, these kind of things. We also have a project management tool. So the idea is, well, you could take that quote and once they approve it, I could turn that into a project. And Maybe you're a service company who needs to bill hourly for your project. So there's time tracking utilities inside of there. And then for your billing side, there's actually an invoicing module, which is just another app in the platform. But the idea is each one of these all along the step, uh, they'll all come back to the CRM system. So one of the things you're going to see when we bring up one of our contacts in the organization is we can see which invoices were ever sent to that contact, which quotes and which projects, all these different modules throughout the platform that fit pretty much any business type, they all connect right back into the CRM. So we're not really going to spend any time showing you the project management or invoicing, but we're going to show you the benefit of having that information present inside of your CRM. So now we're going to focus just down into when we're talking about the CRM applications, like what types of features are you going to see inside of here? So in this, we're going to look at it into kind of four general categories where you've got your pretty much sales tracking, but this involves lead activity, like sending mass emails, uh, qualifying leads, moving them through the pipeline, doing some basic reporting, being able to quickly find deals that are in the final stages, and of course, tracking reminders about everything. That leads right into the next section, which is productivity. And these are all kind of the general tools that are available throughout the platform. 
So you're gonna have a calendar built in. There's an area for you to put down to-dos that you have for yourself. We're gonna connect to pretty much any email provider. So the idea is you can continue using your favorite email client, but we'll show you how our system can supplement that. We can sync in the email, give you a great historical view on each individual contact. And then of course the native mobile application. So the idea is as long as the details are stored in our system, you can get to them from anywhere. And then we'll talk about the both Google Apps and also an Outlook connector, which is something that's coming up very short in the roadmap. For the last two areas, you're looking at performance. So we'll talk about all the different dashboards and great new reports that have come included in V6 and even some of the more advanced tools, which we'll only spend a little bit of time on in the areas of setting sales quotas and being able to do forecasting and such. We'll round that out with customer service, and this is that ticket management area. So we'll talk a little bit about how I can um, set up an automated queue where cases can come in via email, we can have an automatic response sent to our customers, and how we can go launch like a knowledge base out to the customers. And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about like work orders and then of course that 360 view, which is what brings all this data together. So running through these, we're pretty much just gonna kind of skim through because really I wanna get you into the application. So let's go ahead. Let's hop in and let's show you around the tool. Now, we're gonna log in uh, this particular demo account. So I'm logging into Glocial Technologies here. Uh, one little feature is this particular account has multiple businesses related to it. So that's where you see I'm choosing which business to log into. Most users just have a single business. So they log in and then they come straight to this dashboard, your agenda. This is kind of the heart of all activity. And this even goes beyond just the CRM. So when we're talking about productivity, we're, we have a special feature called contextual collaboration inside of Aptivo. And the whole system is built around this technology. What this is, is taking your classic approach to managing reminders and activities. Like you have a calendar, which is different from your individual task list of like internal to-do items you have. And what we've done is we've brought them together. You have a, a single view, although that's not too revolutionary, but when you Click on, let's say, creating an event, sticking it on the calendar. You're going to notice this looks pretty much the same as what you're used to. If you're coming from Office, Apple Mail, Google Apps, all of these applications pretty much have the same details on a calendar event. And we do too, because we actually have, for example, the two-way sync with Google Apps on our calendar service. What's special about our calendar is there's this area down here called associated with. So the idea is that you log in and the first thing you see is a bunch of activities and reminders that you scheduled in the past. And then let's say you have an actual activity you have to complete. Like I've got this lunch meeting with Karim here. Now, maybe you show up and they're not there. So you want to give them a phone call. Easiest way to do that? Well, the idea is that when you're looking at the application, whether you're in the mobile or whether you're in the web like this, it says it's associated with some data. And this could be anything inside of the system. So in this particular case, I had an event and it was just a meeting with this contact. So clicking on that takes me into the contacts application. So you'll see now we're inside of here, looking at the details, and we can get all the information, including the phone number right here. In addition to that, we would be able to go look up all the history on this account. So let's say if we just wanted to see a hit feed of activity, we can go to the newsfeed. Although for this example, we'll go ahead and hop into contacts with a little bit more history. So here we could just get like a chronological breakdown of activity that's happened with this contact. And I'll talk a little bit more about this feature soon. We can see like an email history, what phone calls we've had with them in the past or any notes on their account. Basically all the information is present here. What we have is each of our applications actually shows the same set of features where whenever I'm looking at a record in the system, and this could be a contact, it could be a sales opportunity, a help desk ticket, a project, an invoice, a work order, all these are considered records. And they all have this same kind of structure here where there's a set of tabs, starting with the overview, which is all of the fields, just like kind of the raw information, which you can fully customize. We'll show you that. And then you have all the related information up here, such as the history of activity. It has its own little calendar and its own little task list. And these are the exact same features that we saw on the homepage. But um, when I look here, it's actually filtered to just this one. So the idea is that I can schedule a new follow-up from right here or add a new task. And when you're doing that, you'll see it's automatically associated with this record because I'm creating it from this location. Each of the apps has a very similar structure and works pretty much the same. Where for example, if I go to the cases app here, 
and we go bring up the details of a case, we see the same exact tabs on top with one little exception right here. And we have the same thing where we could come in and create like a follow-up or a task, but in this time it's actually associated with the case. So that's kind of how the whole system is structured. Everything kind of builds around these collaboration features. And we actually did just have a question that popped up, which is, is the newsfeed company-wide or individualized for the account holder logged in? And that's a really good question because it is, I guess both would be the right way to say it. So the way that the newsfeed functions is every time somebody performs an action in the system, whether you're, let's say, recording a payment against an invoice, you advance the lead to the next stage, or you just change the contact's phone number, it'll always record a newsfeed event, and you're going to be able to see everything you did. But the newsfeed event is associated with one or many records, just like um, we were talking about how a calendar event or a task can be associated with one or many records. And that's what makes it determined of where it's going to show up as far as that tab. So each one of those events that popped up on the contact was somehow related to the contact. But there's also a business-wide newsfeed, so I can see everything that's going on. Although a lot of times this can get pretty cluttered, but it has one great function where you could filter and just say, show me everything one person has performed inside of the system. And then there's also a newsfeed on each individual record. So for example, I could click on a project and view its newsfeed. Or I could go to the customer attached to that project, like this, and the customer has a newsfeed. But what's really special about the CRM area of the newsfeed is when you look here, it'll show any event that is related to another action that's even related to the customer. So here, if I see that a new estimate is created, because the estimate's for this customer, it shows up in the customer newsfeed. But one important part comes into play here, which is the security where each one of these events, the records it's attached to, that's what drives the security. So here, if I were logged in as a user who did not have access to the estimates application, I would not be able to see this newsfeed event, but I might be able to see each of these other ones based on my individual security role. So yeah, each person sees an individualized version, but as an admin, there's also just a master business-wide newsfeed where I can see everything happening. Okay. So we're here looking at a customer record and let's just kind of round out these features. So you've got your activity management, your history right there. And then we have two tabs to help you manage all of your communication logging. So phone calls right here, we just see, okay, I can set it up. I can um, just record some basic details. Although there is the capability to perform this action straight from the mobile app. So it's a really cool feature. Uh, if you're on iOS or Android, uh, in both scenarios, you can bring up a contact and then just press on a phone number and it would open up your phone's dialer application and you could call out to the, that person and it would instantly ask you to log details on it afterwards. But then also if you're on Android, there's a special feature where whenever you hang up the phone, it'll actually check your CRM to see if that is a record inside of the database. And if that is a contact that you just spoke with, it'll actually automatically prompt you and then ask you to record that phone call. So it'll do all that completely behind the scenes where just whenever you communicate with your cell phone, it'll automatically know which one should go into the CRM. So that's the phone calling, but then the email, this is where things get really special. So by the way, um, the calendar integrates with Google Calendar and then the tasks integrates with Google Tasks and the new and upcoming Outlook plugin also connects to both of those, which we can talk a little bit about at the end. Um, but with email, this is a generic integration. So yes, it works with Google, but it works with any IMAP email account. So the way it works is we are an email client. Uh, each user will come in, they're gonna connect their email account through their preferences area up here. And once connected, Aptivo is gonna be constantly looking at every email that they send or receive. And what'll happen is if we detect that that email was sent to or from any contact or customer or lead in the system, it'll po pop up on this email tab completely automatically. So what this means is each one of your employees is going to continue using their email exactly how they're accustomed to. But Aptivo is going to keep a complete historical reference of all your interactions in the organization with, without really any, any effort from your employees. And by default, when I'm looking at this, it's just my inbox. But as long as you have the proper security settings in place, you can actually configure it where an admin can go and see everybody. So this way, if somebody's out sick, I can very easily see exactly what they've communicated to the client and I can take appropriate action from there. So otherwise, uh, beyond just giving a history of all of your email, you are able to email out from the system. And what you have available here is there's like a standard email template system. 
um, you'll see that if I go in, I can select the template and there's actually a cool feature where you can go and include fields. So it'll personalize each one of these emails that goes out. And there's also the capability to do mass emailing, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Otherwise, to round out each record, you've got a notes area, pretty standard, straightforward feature, but it's also one of the most commonly used ones. So it's just a general area for you to share information with colleagues and you have all the files. So let's say if you have a contract or if you just got business logo, or let's say if you're talking about a project, you might have help desk tickets, or in a case, you might have like a screenshot of something, all these different cases you have to store files, you'll use this feature. And here you can either upload from your computer or you'll see that we have uh, direct integrations with Google Drive and Dropbox. So for you Google Apps users, you see I can click that. I can just surf my Google Drive account and attach an existing document. Or I could go and upload a file from my computer but put it into Google and, um, and Aptivo at the same time. And then you'll just see it posts a list of links and they're just links out to the Google document location. All right, so the last thing I want to show you here on a customer record is this 360 view, which you'll see across the applications. What this does is it shows you related data across other apps. So this is really big. Um, even if you're just talking about doing contact management and tracking leads and opportunities, this will allow you to see like all the opportunities for a customer. Or if you have a bunch of contacts at the organization, I can go and select contacts. And then it just goes and looks in the other app and finds that data. But then what's really special about this feature is let's say you also want to adopt the invoicing app. Well, when you send an invoice to a customer, it automatically lists it right here. So in addition to getting like all of your communication history and notes on the customer, we can also see a complete history of transactions. So customer calls up and asks about a quote you sent to them last week. You can instantly come here, look up the estimates and then go locate it. Then they might ask about a project that's already in progress form. And that's also available here or a help desk ticket. So then maybe they report a help desk ticket, but it's not in the system. I actually can click on that and I can immediately log a help desk ticket from directly inside of this customer's application. Okay. So that's like when you're looking at the details of a customer or a contact inside of the system, but there's another angle that you want to look at. So that's okay. I've got an existing contact. I want to update his details or let's say schedule a reminder for next week to call them. But then there's the whole concept of, well, maybe I want to identify a list of customers by some criteria, or we're talking about going through a list of leads. Like we just, um, we got a list of leads from a local convention we went to, or we just launched a landing page on our website. We collected a bunch of leads, or maybe you just bought a bunch of brand new businesses and you're going to go market to them now in your local area. Any one of these scenarios, we're going to go through and we're going to be processing a set of data or we're kind of searching through it. So Aptivo has a lot of tools to allow you to browse through lists of your information and find what you're looking for. So here we're in the Leads app and really all of the V6 apps are structured the same where you, you come into the application and you're able to configure your default homepage. So one thing you see that I've done in my business right away is when I click on Leads up here, the first thing it goes to is my personalized list of leads. Because what you can do is, well, I can have security rules where everybody's able to view each lead but when it comes down to it, each lead always has an assignee. So these are everything that's assigned to Kenny Clark. But there might be other views that I wanna look at. So in the left column, we have some kind of quick built-in filters. So for example, I could go under by source and say, show me everything that's from this source, which was like one of 150 leads that I just purchased from Info USA. So that's one example where I can just kind of quickly locate a list of data, but there's also searching capabilities. So one really great thing about the way that you store your information is the flexibility you have in Aptivo. So when we're talking about entering a lead, we are thinking to think what information comes with that lead. There's the standards. Okay, I get the person's name, the company name, uh, phone number, email, things like that. But then you might have certain details that are relevant in your industry that are not relevant or not gonna be available in a, the typical setup. So in this case, I can come down and I have all these different built-in fields. So of course we can rearrange these and move them around, change the values available. So you might have sales territories and yeah, there's an area for you to go and put your sales territories in here. But then you also might potentially have additional information. So in this example company I'm in right here, let's say this is like a tech company. So a couple of the things they're interested in is like the type of building that this customer is located in. So let's say that they have a suite in a high rise building and maybe who their internet service provider is. So what you'll see here is I've just used the, um, there's this form editor, it's called the master layout editor. And I'm able to put in drop down menus and little toggle switches and such. 
And what happens with this information, so when you put a new field into the system, is it becomes available all over the place. And let me show you a couple examples of that. So one is we just checked off that, let's just say that they're in a high-rise office building. So of course I can run a basic search. I should be able to go like this and get some results back. But maybe I want to do a little bit more of an exact search. So what I can do is I can actually change office type to high-rise. I can go run that search. And then when I get my results back, it'll be filtered down. So this would only show the items with high-rise inside of that, um, that value. So this form up here is customizable. And also what returns in a list of data is also customizable. So let's say that in this scenario, I mean, I might be emailing them all. I might be on site. I might be on my mobile app right now and trying to walk around and knock on doors. Or maybe I'm going to go through the list. I'm going to be calling them all. So in that case, depending on what my intent is with this list of data, I can have a different list layout. So this will take the same information, these same 3,800 leads, but it will change what details are visible right away. Of course, I can click on any record to get its details, but when I'm trying to process, let's say, 100 of these in a fast period of time, every little moment that I have to spend like looking and updating, that's a waste of time. It's a waste of efficiency. So here, what I can do is I can have a column set or a list layout built in. So I've got one called cold calling. And you'll see when I click on that, it just changes the information present. So now I get the things that are relevant to me when I'm picking up the phone and dialing through a list. So what I can actually do is once this is all set up and I've got this list, well, maybe I'm going to be handling it over the next three days. I think I'm going to complete it. So I can actually save this whole list as a view, call it whatever I want. And then once I save it, there's actually a special spot over in this left column that we give you for your own custom views. So right there, I'll be able to click on any one of these lists and I can get the information that I had saved from before. Of course, it looks like I've fully processed that one. But here you can see an example. It would save the list layout, or you can also take any save view you have, and it can always just go apply the list layout that I want. So you can freely change these on the fly just to get the information you need. Okay, so continuing on that call calling or cold calling, um, one of the things you're going to want to do is be able to fastly process these leads. So one concept you'll see is before we were looking at the detailed view with all those tabs across the top of the record. This is different where when I just click from a list, it shows me this side panel view. And this is great for recording quick actions. Like let's say I want to add a note on the account. I need to record this phone call for my cold call, or I want to just like schedule a reminder for the next day. I can take all those actions up here. So in this example, I could just say, okay, this is a cold call and maybe they didn't pick up. So what I want to do is I want to attempt to put in a reminder and I'm going to call them tomorrow. So I can actually schedule my follow-up from right here. Maybe I get a little pop-up reminder. Let's do it at like 3 p.m. And then the idea is that that goes into my master agenda. So basically I, I attempted them, I put my follow-up, I can move on to the next one. So I just click right there and then I can go and I can call them. So I can do the same process. So it just enables these very fast actions without actually having to go to the details of each record. But then if I need to make updates, like let's say I come down here and I'm, I'm qualifying them, so I'm gathering information. Well, I can come down and I can actually select records right here. I can make all my changes just in real time. You'll see it all updates instantly. At any time, you might need to view the history, like, okay, well, when was the last time I called this lead? And in that case, you have the detailed view. So you can go straight to more details from the side panel or when you're browsing through a list. If I know that I want to view the details of them, I have the more details button right here. So that's your general data management, but let's talk about that underlying configuration feature because that's really important. So we saw that I can add custom dropdown menus and toggle switches and such, and that I could create a custom list layout like for cold calling. So each app has its own settings area. And this is where you're going to spend a lot of the, the effort in order to take this from a generic platform that fits any business and really make it fine tuned for your industry. There's a bunch of different fields and settings in each app. So things like the status of a lead or the source that they come from, all those default built in fields, they're going to have a simple configuration interface here where you can add your own territories, you can edit existing ones, move them around, everything like that. But then there's also going to be this customize app section. These three features should make up about 75% of your customization effort when it comes to setting up your system. The master layout is kind of the key of everything. 
So each app allows you to fully control what fields are available and it's totally flexible. So the idea is that if you have this type field and maybe it's not as important in your business, I mean, I could delete it entirely or I could just go and move it down to a spot and then maybe adding the company up here is a little bit more important for me. So what you can do is you can actually start to rearrange things to get them in the optimal form. Like let's say if you have a salesperson and you want them to be qualifying leads by asking questions in a specific, um, um, like a specific order, I could actually go create a, a section called like lead qualification. And you'll see how easy this is. And I'm actually able to just drop in fields. So let's say I, want, I have like a yes, no answer. I could just start filling these in. So maybe we have a field called has budget. So I'm just going to go through, I can type in the values. If I want to do a checkbox, um, you'll see the different field types we have available here. So I can even ask them to upload a file. I can have them pick a date. Um, I can do number currency type fields, depending on the type of information you want to store, you should be able to put it in here. And then you'll see as soon as I go add this question has budget. I mean, if I go bring up an existing lead, it's going to pop up exactly where I had it configured. Uh, yeah, sorry. I don't know why it took me so long to find that. And then as soon as I have something like, okay, I've set the drop down menu there, I'd be able to also go run a search on it and go create a custom view and everything like that. So that's the field customization. And then what you'll see is there's another feature that builds right on top called the list layouts. So once you have your fields present, well, now you can go and create a new layout or I could just go and change the default one. So like whatever's up top here is the default. And you'll see that this list of drop down menus, well, it follows those same sections. So that new lead qual section we added right there, well, we can very easily just take the has budget field and include it, get it sized how we want. And then maybe we need to like remove some other stuff to go and make room for it. So let's say at this point, maybe we don't need the email address right away. We can actually go and just remove that from the view to make some room for this other, these other items, which might be more important for browsing. All these updates, well, they happen in completely real time. So you'll see there how quickly it, is, it gets from just going and taking the default setup to configuring it for yourself and dropping in those list layouts. All right. So that's kind of the general data management, general overview of each app. Um, beyond that, what we have is there are reports in each application. So like I showed you the news feed, which can just grab, um, it can grab, let's see, just a, like a complete history of events, but it doesn't really give you an organized output of events. But then each app also has a bunch of built-in reports. So one time, one example would be like, if you want to get just a straight export of all the activities, like show me all phone calls made by a salesperson. You'll see, I can run this activities report and I could filter by one app. So I could say, show me all phone calls to leads if I want. And I could filter by an employee, say like, okay, show me everything placed this month. I could filter by the type of activity. So I could say, show me everything or just show me phone calls. Then I could pull a little in-app report just to get a summary, or I could download the whole thing as a spreadsheet. So there's lots of reports built in like this, where you're going to be able to extract a list of data and just get it out to Excel. And then there's also built in like graphical reports. So for example, in the pipeline, the opportunities app, I can see on average how old my deals are and how long they're sitting inside of the pipeline. So I can help kind of clear up some clogs, I see a bunch of other kind of analysis reports like getting conversion rates and such. But let's kind of dive in. Let's talk a little bit more about the pipelining. So we started to get into leads where we saw we had a list of leads. Um, one thing I didn't explain is how leads can come into the system. So as far as the overall sales pipeline, we have leads and opportunities, and we've taken a very standard approach. So if you've used any CRM systems in the past, the typical conversion flow applies here. Uh, it's called the customer in our system. You might've heard it referred to as an organization or an account elsewhere, but it has the same type of behavior where customer is a group of um, people. It's an organization or a company or a buying party, even if in individuals, and then a contact is always just an individual person. A lead is an unqualified deal. It's somebody you don't really have a, a relationship going with. Maybe they have just come in from a website or you just have their business card. You don't really have a truly established deal that you're in the process of going after. So the leads is simply a bucket to hold all these unqualified deals, whereas your opportunities are the deals that are actively on the table. And that's where you're going to start to put together like some basic financial projections and such I mean, if your business desires that. And you'll see a lot of the reporting is really comes into play when it comes to opportunities, whereas leads are more of kind of the large scale or um, 
yeah, large scale operations where you're processing many leads and sending mass email, doing marketing activities and trying to move them along to the next stage. So in the leads, when they're coming into the system, one little comment is the entire platform has a built in REST API. So you're actually going to see that we have a simple WordPress plugin available out there for those of you at the WordPress site where it allows you to build a, a form. I can put like a contact page on a website and then it actually submits into Aptivo as a sales lead. You can actually build your own custom integrations. So if you want it to integrate your own marketing platform or something that you already have in place, you can do that. Or if you just have a website that's custom coded or built on another platform, you can leverage the API here. We got lots of examples. So you can both create and read data. That's one of the common ways to get them in here. And then of course, if you ever have a spreadsheet. So for those of you migrating from an existing platform or um, also if you just have an ongoing need, like let's say you're running a newsletter and you produce leads out of it. You can always just come in here and import a spreadsheet of data to get them bulk imported. You get the leads in, you set up your list using that search feature, create our custom views here, and then we go through and process them, which is pretty much just, you're looking at each deal, you're communicating with them, you're setting reminders to ensure that you're following up when appropriate, and you're just coming back here and updating all the information you have present. So one thing you get to record when you're in a deal is, by the way, each feature has a couple kind of unique tabs up here beyond just the common ones we saw earlier. And on the sales app, you have items of interest. So this is where if you have products inside of your database, there's actually one central app called the items app, and it stores all the different products that you have available. And yeah, this could even include general services. Like let's just say that we're gonna be doing a simple website for somebody. So the idea is even before I issue any sort of official quote or anything like that, I can start recording what products that they have interest in. Then eventually I'm gonna to talk to them. I got all the information I have, so I update it all here. And then I go through and I convert them. So I'm just gonna add a couple details in here. And then we get to hit that convert button. So this will actually turn the lead into the three different records, a customer, a contact, and an opportunity and they'll all be linked together. So your active deal is gonna be this opportunity at the end. Right here, you're just seeing like the email addresses and business name and such you'd previously stored on the lead. They'll be copied in automatically along with all those field selections you've done. So you're basically just previewing things and just kind of hit and convert, moving along. And then on the deal, well, we could say that this is like a website design. And then you'll notice we have like a stage of the deal Changing the stage, you can see I have it set up where that'll adjust my probability. It's an optional feature you have. And then here to do some of my pipe planning, I could say I think it's gonna close at the end of the month. And then I could say how much I think it's gonna worth, uh, be worth. And there's also a feature in here where, let's say if I, um, if I just wanted the opportunity amount to be automatically filled in, you can actually have it fill in based on the items that you attach to the deal as well. So we come through and we create everything, we convert that lead, and pretty much now the lead is in an archive state. So if I go browse to my list, it'll actually be hidden because we see that the lead status, it'll update over to uh, converted once done. And then down here, if we ever come back and review the lead, it'll be linked up with the opportunity and such. So we can go straight from the lead, or we also could have browsed in direct from the opportunities app. So let's see, we got Kayla Green website, it's in the consultation status, assigned to Kenny Clark. Let's just go straight to the opportunities app to show you what it's like where, okay, well now I'm Kenny and I've got many deals on the table. So as far as just managing my pipeline in general. One feature we do have, which is brand new, it's available in the ultimate plan, is for quota management. And that's where you can piece together dashboards like this that show your performance of not only yourself, but then also your full team. So each employee, when you set them up in the system, they can have a manager and you can go several layers inside of the manager hierarchy. And then it all reports up this way where I can browse down and I can see exactly how everybody is performing during a period. And you'll see that each user can actually have their in own individual quota. So it shows you how you perform against those. If that's something of interest to you, it's actually available in the CRM suite. It's called the sales planning application. So where the quotas are defined and all that is done right here. Oops. Let's head over to the 2015 year. And you'll see that you can have an organization level quota and then each user can take on their own ownership and then they can also pass down quotas to each employee. This also acts as a historical tool so I can see exactly how much money I've made in the past and I can look off into the future and see how much I'm forecasting during each period as well and how much is sitting in the pipeline. But back to the opportunities, let's talk about a little bit more of a granular scale where maybe I'm just doing day-to-day -day management. 
So you have different dashboards and tools to analyze the, once again, the pipeline for yourself or your team like this. So I can see how much money is sitting inside of each stage. Or I could just take a, a look like this. This is a really common view that people like to use is, well, where are all my deals in the funnel? So you can see I'm a little bit top heavy in this case. And I should be able to drill in and kind of click on anything. So for example, I click on consultation and right there we can see the opportunity that we were working on earlier. Many other views that you might want to do, I mean, you might just want to browse by the stage that they're in. So I could browse like that. Um, you also might want to browse by the close date. So of course you can kind of sort through records and we can see what's closing the soonest and go focus on them. Though I see some are designed to be closed in the past. But in this case, let's hop into the Kayla Green. So we've got this website design. We have our items that have popped over. And one thing you might do is, well, maybe I say in order to try to get them further along the deal, okay, I'm gonna give you a 20% discount on all services. So even before I give them a formalized quote, I can put down my verbal promises right here as far as the pricing is concerned. And you'll see I can even mark individual items as won or lost. So potentially I offer them like an upsell and then they, they don't go for it. So I can say that, well, I tried to offer them this upsell, but it's not gonna continue on to the next stage. But otherwise what you see on an opportunity it's almost identical to what we saw on a lead and even like just on a contact. So really once you get into the pipeline, it's more about these tools that help you analyze um, kind of like the progress of your pipeline and where things are. And then of course there's manager tools, which I'll show you in a moment as well to analyze the pipeline overall and people's performance. But as far as the end user, they're, they're down to the same activities. So this is, you'll notice a common theme throughout Aptivo is the use of that contextual collaboration where it's just making it really easy to place phone calls, record communication, add an update information, and then go set that reminder for next time. So maybe in this case, I just need to create a proposal for them. So the whole idea is I schedule that in there. The next day when I log in, I should see that pops up right on the top of my task list. And then it leads you right back into the opportunity. So the whole system is about flowing in and out of that agenda, being able to get right back to your data and then come take appropriate steps. And as far as the deals, like moving them onto the next stage, marketing them as close, some of you will just stop the process here. So, okay, I go to the stage and I just say, well, I won it or I lost it. And that's how you end your deal. But there's also all those connections to the other apps. And this is where things get unique in the CRM. We're not gonna dive into the details of any of these flows, but we have all these connecting modules. So we could turn this deal into a project or we could turn it into a work order or a sales order for selling physical product. All these different options we have. And what you'll see is, let's see if we go to an estimate, it just selects the customer, the contact. It'll grab the items that we had attached to it. So as far as actually producing the quote, there's very little effort that I actually have to do. I just come down here, I get to email it straight out. So this is all about kind of these end-to-end -end business flows. So what I'll do is I'll actually not send it to that random person. Go ahead and send it to myself. And we'll just kind of run through a flow to show you the one last piece, which is all the interconnectivity of these transactions with your business data. So an estimate can also once again be turned into something else. So let's just say that we turn that into like an invoice. We go bill them. I'll just save for later. Uh, I have invoice numbering turned off. And then we record the payment against the invoice. So of course we just ran through all that without actually delivering our service, but just for the sake of the example, we just performed a bunch of steps. Every step of the way, it'll have a reference back to that customer, Anderson's Media. But then let's just say you fast forward six months, a year, and somebody from Anderson's Media calls up. Anderson's, I see. So they call up and you're like, well, I don't really remember about this customer. So the first thing you can do is you hit, hop into their newsfeed and you'll see all those actions we just took. So we had their initial lead and we converted them. We created a contact in the deal and then we moved straight into the estimate and then we emailed the estimate out and then we created an invoice from it and then we recorded the payment against the invoice. So each one of these steps, even though they're happening in other applications, they're gonna come right back here into the CRM. So this really gives you that holistic picture of everything going on across the platform. So that's the customer. Uh, the last little piece I wanna show you today is, actually, sorry, there's two more pieces. I wanna show you some of the opportunity performance and then talk a little bit about the help desk for just a minute. So probably get wrapped up in just a few more minutes. So here on the opportunities, there's a bunch of built-in reports. So we saw like the aging report earlier, there's a, a sales rep performance report to see conversion rates. 
And then there's also things like this, like um, analyzing where you win the most deals from, which employees are winning the most deals and closing the most revenue. You can also look at the same thing for losses. So when you lose a deal, I can record if I lost it to a specific competitor or why I lost it, like if I had, was charging too much. And I can record like where, which stages I most commonly lose from, things like that. And then we were talking about like leads, like going through cold calling and such. So I can analyze how much revenue I made from opportunities that initially came from leads, what my conversion rate here is, and which employees are doing the best job at converting leads to the next stage. One thing I also didn't really show you is over on like the, the individual deals and customers, everything that we've been showing today inside of the web application is actually available over here in the mobile app. So what I'm doing right here is I'm actually on my Android phone. We're just doing uh, screen sharing over the Wi-Fi. And I'll show you when I log in here, I've got access to my master agenda. So of course it's optimized for the touchscreen. I can go very quickly insert a new task or event on the go. And then, whoops, did not mean to close that out. Hop back into the app. And I can also go in, I can navigate around. So I could go into like a detailed breakdown of my tasks. Or I could go in, we could go find that same customer. And we have all their information here. So we could click on a phone number and call it. We could quickly add a note or a task, any sort of activity. And check this out. That view that we were looking at with their history, well, we can get that same exact view on the mobile device as well. So everything you're doing across mobile and web, it's 100% real time like this. So that's why we just showed everything from the web today is because you're gonna be able to perform all this directly from the mobile app as well. So with that, the last little piece we're gonna show you today is over on the case management side. As far as the day-to-day -day interactions, I mean, sending emails to customers and everything like that, uh, cases definitely inherently have a little bit more kind of email management. So here I'll show you real quickly the case um, email template system. So here I can create a standard template like, oh, your case is closed. And then what you'll see is you can actually pull details. So this is really cool where I've got the attributes I have on my case, like the priority of the case or the description of it or the number. So I can say, okay, your case number, and then I could go insert the case number has been closed. And I could maybe have a salutation. So I could say, dear, and then, well, the case is attached to one of the contacts from your CRM. So I can actually look at the contacts information right here and I could say grab the contacts first name. And then maybe at the end you want to say please confirm your phone number. And in this case I also want to get the contacts phone number. So I can go in, I can find contacts, I can find their phone number, I can say pull their business phone number. So some really cool stuff you can do as far as building these email templates. Although this same thing is actually available in the sales apps and general contact management as well. But one feature really popular here is our email to case. So being able to manage the intake of cases, it's really common to use the support portal where on the website, the users can come and submit cases. It's also really common to set up a common email address like support at glocialtech.com. And then every email that comes in, you can have it automatically send them a response. So it sends them a quick little email acknowledging the case. And then there's different routing rules. So one of the cool things this allows you to do is if you have a larger support team, you can actually have it automatically assigned to people based on this different rule. And you also have a concept of what's called an SLA inside of cases. This is a really cool feature where you can basically automate um, the resolution of your cases. So let's just say that this is my standard SLA I offer to all customers. And then you can come in, you can say, well, the case must be closed within seven days. And if it's not, then I want to reassign it to a manager and I want to email a manager, maybe like one specific person. And then maybe you want to add another rule. So I could say, well, the case actually has to be, if the customer is not updated within at least 12 hours, then I want to do the same thing where I want to reassign to the manager. But you also see I could go and select another person. So I could have like one specific escalation point for all cases and then have them routed up there. Otherwise, as far as going through and managing your cases, you got the same system of custom save searches. You can sort by priority. When you drill in on a case, you have the standard functionality where, yep, I can go shoot them out a quick little email message from right here, update any case field, go schedule a meeting with them, all that. And any screenshots or problems, you have your standard collaboration features up here. The only special thing you'll see is from an app like Cases or Opportunities when you draft emails. 
you'll notice you just initiate the first email from our system and we stick this special ID number in the subject line. So that way, once again, all the communication related to this case is automatically collected back on the email tab right here. Okay, so for today's presentation, that's gonna go ahead and wrap things up. Um, if there's any more questions, definitely feel free to stick around and ask, but for that, we're gonna go ahead and sign off. So thanks everybody for tuning in. If you need additional information, best ways to get help is definitely using the built-in support chat in the bottom left hand app, uh, area of the application right here. Then also over on the website, you can get some further information over in the help section. So if you're brand new to the system, you'll see we got this great starter guide here. Then for the users who are a little bit more advanced, you have a full user manual, which will kind of give you a breakdown of each of the features, like okay, general admin features and such, and also documentation on specific areas. So for example, what are all the settings inside of the leads application? You'll be able to browse through there and get all the information on that. So once again, thanks for attending, and we'll see you next time.